I made a video, my previous video was about uh, these three masses. And I'm going to continue to work with those same three masses. And, and what I want to do is to find the principal axis of inertia. And the first thing you should know about this is that it's P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L, like the principal of a high school, instead of the principal with the P-L-E. And I had it the other way, and I feel dumb. But, you know, you learn stuff all the time. So it's principal meaning the important, that's, I think that's what it means in this case, the important axis of inertia. So let me just re show you what I did before and what we're going to do. And, and I'm going to do this two different ways. Okay. So I have these three masses. The first thing I want to do is define the center of mass. And that's pretty easy. I can just go through each mass times its position uh, and sum those up divided by the total mass. And I get the vector location of the center mass. And I made a function. I'm going to show you that. And the next thing I want to do was to, um, if I have the angular velocity of the system, the angular velocity vector, I want to find the angular momentum vector. But to do that, I multiply it by the moment of inertia tensor, that thing. So I have a vector operated, uh, this operated on a vector gives me the angular momentum. And that's what we have for rigid body rotations. And I'll show you what we get. But here's my uh, inertia tensor IXX, IXY, blah, blah, blah. And then I find any time I have double indices XX, Y, Y, Z, Z, it's just the sum of MI, YI squared plus ZI squared for the X's. And th these are the Y value with respect to the center mass, right? Because you need a point. And this, I should have written this as, um, you know, really I'm just moving my origin right there. I guess you could think of it that way. And then I, I do the same thing for Y, Y would be XI squared, ZI squared, ZZ was would be xi squared, yi squared. And then for the uh, the cross term, xy, uh, it would be negative mi, xi, yi, sum up all those. And you can see that these two terms would be the same because if I just switch the order, I get the same thing. So I really only have to calculate these terms right here, just those six, and I did. So let's, and, and what we found was that in some cases, the angular velocity and the angular momentum were in different directions. That's a huge, huge, huge point. Okay, switching over here. This is the program that I made in my previous program, and I, I will link to this down below. So let's just go over this really quickly because you don't need to know everything. Uh, these, this is just the three masses. I made the three masses right there as spheres. And then I added them to a, a list, a list of objects, because doing that allows me to use do the same idea for as many points as I want, not just three. I'm gonna do three because we can see it and write it and do it manually, um, but that's that. This is a function right here that returns the center of mass. So it, it uses that list, I pass it that list of masses, ms, I call it ms, and then I just go through each element in there, take its mass, which is which would be ms.m, times its position, ms or I called it mm, mm.pos, and add it to the top thing, and then do the same thing for the total, and add to the bottom, and then return the difference of the, the, the division of those two. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Now, the next function I have here is to define the center, the moment of inertia tensor. Uh, and again, I'm doing this in weird ways. I understand that. One, I'm using WebVPython, which does not have matrix operations built in, so I kind of had to do it myself, which I enjoy. It's kind of fun. Um, but I'm going to pass to it a point about which I want to calculate the moment of inertia tensor and the list of masses. So, you know, I could rotate it about a different point, but I'm using the center mass, so I'm, I could pass anything, though. And then I here's my six elements. I only need six of them, right, because the other three are already calculated. And... So what I do is I just set these values to zero because I'm going to be adding up things to them. So I need to start with the value of zero. And then this just goes through the list of masses. And it's here's your xx. That's y, the y value with respect to the origin squared, z value with respect to origin squared, add it up. And then I return it as a list of vectors. I'm going to run this for you in a second. A list of vectors is my matrix. So it's vector, vector, vector. Then I define another uh, function that takes a matrix and a vector, three by three and a three by one, and it operates them together. Uh, so it's, it's really just um, finding the dot product and multiple times. It's not that bad. 
Okay, now I picked an uh, uh, angular velocity vector in the y direction and uh, an angular momentum I calculated with I, I calculate I, I, I do I dot or I omega and I print that and then I make arrows for that and here's what we get. Okay, so the yellow one is the angular momentum, the cyan is the angular velocity and they're not in the same direction. They're not in the same direction. And then there's, here's my angular, my moment of inertia tensor right there. Okay. So what I want to do with the principal axis of inertia is to find a direction in which these two are in the same direction. So now there's a lot of tricks to this, but I like to do it in a way that uses Python because it's fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's just go back over here and change this code because I want to call this, first of all, I want to call this omega with a W just because I'm going to be typing a lot, omega. I'm going to call W as omega. That's like an omega, right? I can print that. I don't really care about that. And then down here for these arrows, this is going to be omega. And they're both the same length. I didn't really care. Uh, but I'm going to put it in the x-axis, x direction. So where did I set omega? Over oh, here it is. So let's put this as 1, 0, 0. There. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is to rotate that vector around, uh, let's go 2 pi in the xy plane. And let's just see, every time I rotate it, I'm going to see if uh, those two are in the same direction or not. Okay. So down here, I got my vectors. Uh, let's go and do this. I'm going to say theta equals zero. Uh, D theta is equal to 0 0.01. So I'm going to step it by 0.01 radians every time I move it. While theta is less than two times pi, so it's going to go all the way around the circle. Uh, oh, I need to calculate. Oh, I guess I've already got it the right way. But let's put uh, omega is equal to, um, I guess I should move these down here. Control X, put these after that. Omega is vector cosine theta, sine theta, zero. So it's in the XY plane, and as I rotate theta, that, that vector is going to rotate around. Uh, let's make this rate 100, so it'll take some time. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is to, I have omega, right? I just need to recalculate L. So I'm going to do the same thing I did right up here, right? L is just m dot i t omega. So m dot is my matrix multiplication. Uh, I t is my moment of inertia tensor. And now I can plot, I can move both of these vectors. So I'm going to say w arrow dot, I got to spell it right, dot axis is equal to um, the same thing, scale times norm w, it's omega, and then l arrow dot axis equals scale times norm l. And actually, if I do norm, I don't, oh, I do need the scale because it would be too big. Okay. Now I'm going to update theta. Theta equals theta plus plus d theta. And that should do it. Let's see if it works. No, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? While theta is less than two times pi, theta is zero, it didn't move. It didn't, what the heck? It just sat there. Print, finished. Did it just finish really quick? It didn't finish. So it just sat there. What did I do wrong? While well, theta is less than two pi, let's just print print theta in here. Let's just see. Weird. Okay, it's doing theta. It's just not moving those things. Oh, I know why. Aha. 
because I never changed my value of omega. So let's let's put this same line right here. Oops. Copy that right there. Okay. I think it is doing it. It just and it was too I was in, too impatient to wait for it to finish. There we go. So you'll see that there are certain points at which the the angle between those two is zero. They're in the same direction. And so I want to find those directions. Um, let's do this. Let's make a graph. I'll put it right down here. I don't I don't really put, I'll put it at the top. Um, make a graph. G1 equals graph. Uh, X title. Oh, that's I, let's do X title equals uh, theta. Y title equals alpha width equals 500 height equals 250 and then f1 equals g curve color equals color dot blue so i want to plot the angle between those two vectors okay so let me jump over to the paper and show you just as a reminder how we calculate the angle between two vectors which i'm going to call alpha um, down here okay jumping back to the paper just really quickly so suppose I have L and omega like this. There's L and there's omega. Well, if I take L dot omega, I get a number. And that's also equal to the magnitude of L times the magnitude of omega times the cosine of alpha, where that's alpha. So I can solve for alpha um, by taking the dot product divided by the magnitudes, which I actually what I'm going to do is do cosine alpha is L hat dot omega hat norm. They're, they both have a magnitude of one, but I don't really care. I'm going to do it just to be sure. And that way I don't, I don't have to divide by their magnitudes. And then alpha is going to just be equal to uh, the dot product. This I would write it L hat dot omega hat uh, inverse cosine. Okay, I didn't write that out. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to plot that. So down here, I have L, I have omega. Uh, let's calculate the angle between them. Alpha equals arc cosine a norm L, a dot, dot, norm L, norm omega. And now let's plot alpha on the vertical and theta on the on the horizontal. F1 dot plot uh, theta alpha. Missing a right parenthesis. That's not surprising. Um, gets a, missing a right parenthesis. I just, I just added it there. Let's see if that fixes it. Sometimes you just got to guess. Okay. So that's good. And here you see that we have four directions. One, two, three, four, at which the angular velocity and the angular momentum are the same direction. Let's just pick one of these and, and just see if it, just check it out. So that's going to be 0.913. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. What I want to do is to, to run around. And if this angle between them is very, very, very small. Let's say less than um, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. I just picked that. Then I'm going to draw a new vector there in the same direction and leave it. Okay. So let's do that. I think that'd be fun. And print it. So I calculate alpha. Now I can say if alpha, um, the magnitude of alpha. So I think ABS. No, it'd just be alpha. If alpha, let's do less than uh, 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. I don't know if that will work. Uh, then what I want to do is to print omega. And that'll be in, in radians per second. And I want to draw an arrow there. So let's say, let's just put arrow uh, position equals rcom. That's where these other arrows are. RC, I called it RC. Uh, axis equals scale 
times norm of omega. And let's make it magenta. Color equals color dot magenta. Now, I, I'm magenta. I'm going to have multiple, I could have multiple arrows here. So you got to be careful. It's going to be kind of a little blurry. But I think this will be a good uh, first test. Let's just see if this works. No, it didn't leave it. Okay, my theta, my alpha must have been too big. So let's put this at, um, if alpha is less than 10 to the negative third. No. Um, 10 to the negative 2. There we go. Yes! <laughs> And there are my principal, there, there are two axes, principal axes um, for this object. So if I ask, if I have an angular velocity in any of these directions, then the angular momentum and the angular velocity will be in the same direction. Now, there's a third axis, and I could find that. Um, but these have to be perpendicular, right? And there's only one more vector that's perpendicular to all three of those, and that's in the z direction. So let's just put that in there manually uh, at the end. So I'm just going to say arrow pos equals rc axis equals scale times uh, vector 0 0 1 um, color equals magenta Ma -mugen magenta uh, and then the other one's going to be in the negative z direction so let's just put two of them and we can test we can. I did this before. We can test that that the angular velocity and the angular momentum are in the same direction there. But once you find two of them, you can find the the third. This is just art. And there, there you go. Okay. Now, I did this for a very simple case. Three masses. You could do it for more complicated masses. But, but, okay. If if the if you do not have one of the axes in the xy plane, you won't find it, right? Because it won't get down to zero. Um, so I'll do an example of that later because what I don't know what you'd have to do. You'd have to kind of like rotate it in more than one dimension, rotate it in this direction, find the minimum, and then rotate it in the other direction to find the minimum, and then go back and forth. I guess that's what you would do. Um, but if there's some, some symmetry there in the z direction, then then you know that, the ax, that two of the axes have to be in the xy plane so that you can find it that way. But just fun. It's just fun to see this. Um, okay, so there is another way to calculate these, uh, and I'll do that. And there's also, I want to show you, and I have two more videos at the very least, um, show you uh, that these are rotating, uh, angular momentum is in that direction um, by not using angular momentum, and that'll be fun. So I'll put a link to my previous video down below. I'll put a link to this code, um, and I'm just rotating around because I just like it. I'm excited. Okay.